Thank you for introduction. So uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Giovanni for organizing this uh, wonderful event. So my name is uh, Shunsuke Fukami, and I'm very happy to share with you our very recent works on the stochastic magnetic tunnel junctions. Okay, so, uh, so the title of my talk is Nanosecond Relaxation Time in Stochastic Magnetic Tunnel Junction Theory and Experiment. So today I will show that a uh, magnetic tunnel junction that can uh, fluctuate in a very uh, short time scale. Okay, so uh, this work was uh, mainly performed in Tokyo University and the um, proof of concept demonstration of the probabilistic computing uh, was uh, done in collaboration with the Spirio Data Group in Purdue University. Okay, so let me start. So, okay, so this is the outline of my talk. So uh, the main target of my, uh, our research is uh, to realize a probabilistic computing, which is a kind of um, unconventional computing for, uh, that can uh, efficiently address uh, computationally hard problems. So um, I guess some of you knows well about the probabilistic computing, but uh, other of you are not. So I will uh, give a brief introduction to the probabilistic computing. And then I will quickly show our proof of concept demonstration of the integer factorization based on the probabilistic computing. And then, so the third part is the uh, main of my talk. So I will show the uh, theory and the experimental results of the nanosecond stochastic MTJs. And finally, I will summarize my talk. Okay, so let me start from the introduction. So, uh, so today the traveling is restricted, but uh, once uh, the time uh, to freely travel uh, comes again, uh, I have many attractive spots in the Tohoku region in Japan, so as shown here. And uh, once you come to the Tohoku region, you will uh, have a traveling salesman problem, which is the kind of the optimization problems. So the traveling salesman problem is uh, to find uh, the shortest route to go around these uh, sightseeing spots and return to the origin. So this is a, a typical uh, computationally hard problems and the conventional classical computers cannot efficiently address. Okay, let me show another example, which is the integer factorizations. So as you uh, well know, the uh, current computers can uh, very easily solve the multiplications, but the inverse process integer factorization is um, a difficult problem for the classical computers. And this forms the basis of the data and uh, the encryption technologies. And for such a kind of the, uh, complex problems, uh, Richard Feynman gave a famous talk in 1981 entitled Simulating Physics with Computers. And in his lecture, he mentioned that if you want to make a simulation of nature, you'd better make it quantum mechanical. And uh, so as you know, this is the famous suggestion for the group of quantum computing. And uh, so this uh, has triggered the extensive effort to realize the quantum computers. And this is uh, also uh, a suggestion in the same lecture, but it is not recognized well. So he mentioned in the same lecture that the, the other way to simulate a probabilistic nature is by a computer which itself is probabilistic. So this uh, suggests another kind of un unconventional computers which can be uh, referred to as the probabilistic computers. And this is the main topic of my talk. Okay, so let me uh, briefly uh, describe the uh, fundamental principle of the probabilistic computing. So the fundamental principle of the probabilistic computing is this uh, well-known Boltzmann distributions. And this equation tells you that the uh, lowest energy state should be most frequently observed. So this is the uh, basis of the probabilistic computing. And uh, by the way, the, uh, this equation also tells you that uh, by decreasing the temperature or the effective temperature, 
you will find the uh, lowest energy state as, uh, by decreasing the temperature. And this is the basis of the quantum or simulated annealing. Okay, let me elaborate the procedure of the probabilistic computing. So uh, in the probabilistic computing, you need to first define an energy or a cost function for the given problem. And then you need to map the cost function to a physical system with probabilistic nature or a physical system with uh, stochastic neurons. And after that, you just need to watch the system and acquire uh, statistics. And finally, you will find an answer for the given problem at the most frequent state. Okay, let me dis uh, describe schematically. So for the quantum or simulated annealing, you need to first define the energy for the given problems, and then you decrease the effective temperatures. And then you will finally obtain the answer for the given problem at the converged state. So this is the uh, procedure of the quantum or simulated annealing. And the probabilistic computing is uh, similar but different from the annealing technique. So uh, in the similar way with the annealing technique, you need to first define the energy or cost functions, and then you, you need to uh, keep the temperature high enough and uh, acquire the statistics. And then uh, when the, uh, after the uh, sufficient time, you will obtain a clear histogram and the you will obtain the answer at the most frequent state. So this is the procedure of the probabilistic computing. And I will uh, describe the example just later. Okay, so uh, I will go to the uh, proof of concept of the probabilistic computing. So I will show the uh, demonstration of the integer factorizations. Okay, so the uh, demonstration for the probabilistic computing uh, you need to first uh, have the uh, device uh, which has the controllable stochasticities. And after that, you need to uh, construct a probabilistic bit or P bit, which shows a sigmoidal response to the input signal. And after that, you need to uh, connect the probabilistic bit with a synaptic weight logic and construct a probabilistic circuit. And finally, you need to define the uh, algorithm or the cost function and map it to the uh, probabilistic circuit. So I will show uh, one by one with uh, following this uh, flow. Okay, and uh, in this experiment, we chose an integer factorization as an illustrative example of the optimization, combinatorial optimization problem. Okay, first I will discuss the uh, stochastic device. So uh, as most of you will, knows well, the uh, cobalt ion boron MGO based magnetic tunnel junctions is the uh, critical building blocks of the today's MRAM technologies. And in 2010, our team uh, showed uh, reasonably uh, the, the, uh, a good MTJ is, uh, the good MTJ properties is obtained in these material systems. And in this paper, uh, we showed that the uh, thermal stability factor E over KBT of 40 is obtained at the cobalt ion boron free layer thickness of 1.7 nanometers, which is uh, large enough to ensure the 10 years retentions for the single, uh, single device. And for the probabilistic computing, you need to enhance the uh, hopping between these two states. And this can be achieved by simply reducing the height of the energy barriers. And uh, we, can, we could do it by increasing the thickness of the cobalt ion boron. And the result is shown here. So the uh, y-axis is the retention time of the MTJs. So by increasing the thickness of the cobalt ion boron from 1.7 to around 1.9 nanometer, the retention time uh, was successfully reduced to a millisecond time scale. And this shows the uh, time domain uh, resistance uh, for the different uh, DC bias current. And at the current of around uh, minus 11 microamps, the equal uh, probability fluctuation was observed. 
So now we have the stochastic uh, device. So next we construct the probabilistic bit. And this figure shows the uh, unit cell of the probabilistic bit, which was proposed by Kerem Kamsari in 2017. And we constructed the probabilistic bit with this unit circuit and the left panels shows ex obtained experimental results. So the uh, lower panels shows the time domain uh, output voltage uh, for the different input voltage, 1.875 to 2 volt. And the uh, upper uh, panel shows the time averaged output voltage as a function of the input voltage. So the experimental results are well fitted by the sigmoidal function, which is the uh, prerequisite for of the binary stochastic neurons. So now we have the probabilistic bit. So next we construct a probabilistic circuit and we use a, a Arduino microcontroller for the synaptic weight logic that connects the probabilistic bit and we use the P bit up to, up to eight probabilistic bits. And this it's the uh, actual photograph of the prepared uh, probabilistic, rudimentary probabilistic computers. So we have uh, eight stochastic MTJ here, 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 and they are connected by the microcontroller here. Okay, so next uh, I'd like to uh, briefly describe the cost function for the integer factorizations which is the algorithm to solve the, uh, these problems. So this is the uh, energy or cost function to solve the integer factorization and uh, so E is the energy and F large F is the number we would like to factorize and large X and large Y are the number we would like to find. So X and Y are the factor we would like to find. And the large X and Y are represented by uh, this binary form and the small x1, x2, x3, small y1, y2, y3 are uh, represented by the uh, probabilistic bit. Okay, let me uh, show the example to factorize 35 by 4 p bits. So when we uh, substitute uh, this equation to this energy uh, and uh, then we obtain the energy uh, as shown here. And there's one important point here. So we have uh, three body interactions and four body interactions here. And such kind of many body interactions are, are very uh, difficult. Uh, the quantum computers the, uh, like D-Wave are uh, not uh, uh, efficiently uh, solve such kind of many body interactions. But for the probabilistic computers, we can easily uh, incorporate such kind of the many body interaction because we can interact the probabilistic bit electrically. And to reduce the total energy, the uh, required input for at the each uh, time can be obtained by the derivative, the derivative of the energy uh, by the uh, state of each p bit as shown here. So what we need to do is uh, to program this uh, interaction to the microcontroller and uh, once the uh, state of the p bit changes, the uh, uh, microcontroller sends the new input signal to each p bit and uh, so return these cycles and watch the statistics. So this is the basic procedure of the uh, probabilistic computing. Okay, now let me show the results of the integer factorizations. So we first uh, try to factorize 35 by 4 p bits, and this shows the uh, state before turning on the correlations. So at this stage, we see the uh, one by one to seven by seven at the equal probabilities. But once we turn on the correlations, we saw a prominent peak at the seven by five and five by seven, which are exactly the factor of the 35. 
And we tried to factorize 161 by 6 p bits and 945 by 8 p bit, and we could observe the uh, prominent peak at the position of the exact factors. So this uh, shows that the, our probabilistic computers can uh, efficient can uh, successfully solve the integer factorizations. Okay, so. Uh, it is clear that we need to increase the size of the probabilistic computer from the 8 p bit. So now I will go to the main part and discuss how to increase the size of the probabilistic computers. Okay, so uh, so as I showed, the, uh, this so this is the uh, time domain. Uh, resistance change uh, for our perpendicular easy axis stochastic MTJs. And we observe the fluctuation uh, with the time scale of millisecond. But for the real scale uh, problems, the, we need uh, to have much more pivots. And in that case, we need to make the uh, faster, make the fluctuation speed much, much more faster for large scale problems. Then how we can reduce the fluctuation time, tau, relaxation time. And I guess most of you will uh, say that it can be achieved by reducing the thermal stability factor E over KVT. And uh, this is uh, partly correct, but we found that uh, the reduction of the E over KBT is not complete to reduce the uh, relaxation time. So now I will show uh, the uh, complete answer to reduce the uh, relaxation time. Okay, so uh, we perform, we first perform the numerical simulation based on the LLG equations for the perpendicular and the in-plane MTJs. And also we modeled, uh, uh, so we first modeled a perpendicular MTJ with the effective perpendicular anisotropy field of 10 millitesla, which corresponds to the uh, thermal stability factor E over KBT or delta of 38. And uh, we saw the microsecond uh, time scale fluctuations. Okay, next, uh, we uh, change the uh, axis and uh, keep the uh, uniaxial anisotropy, and we calculate the in plane MTJs. So, uh, the, in the in plane MTJs, we set the perpendicular effective anisotropy field of minus 10 millitesla and the in plane is the in plane anisotropy field of 10 millitesla, which is equivalent to the perpendicular MTJ because the, uh, this means that you need to uh, apply uh, 10 millitesla to rotate your magnetization from the in plane easy axis to the perpendicular directions. And you need to apply a 10 millitesla to rotate your magnetization from the in plane easy axis to the in plane hard axis. So this is uh, nothing but the uniaxial anisotropy magnet. And we saw the uh, fluctuation with the time scale of the around microsecond. Okay, so the point is that the thermal stability factor is uh, the same between these two systems. And next, uh, we uh, increase the uh, perpendicular effective anisotropy field from 10 millitesla to 101 tesla. So 1 tesla means that you need to apply a 1 tesla to rotate your magnetization from the easy axis to the perpendicular directions. And the point is that the in-plane easy in plane anisotropy field is uh, constant at 10 millitesla. So the uh, lowest energy to overcome the, the energy barrier to go to the, uh, the other state is the same. So the summer stability factor is 3.8 for all the cases. But the uh, fluctuation time scales are clearly different. And so we uh, change the state from uh, at the uh, 200 nanosecond and 20 nanosecond to uh, flip from the initial state to the other state. So the uh, point of this calculation is that in in-plane MTJs, the fluctuation time scale, tau, the relaxation time depends on the perpendicular 
effective anisotropy field. Although the uh, energy barrier is independent of the perpendicular anisotropy field. And the, because the uh, relaxation time tau should obey the nail arrhenius law, uh, and the delta is constant, so we have to think about the uh, dependence of the uh, tau zero, the uh, attempt time, uh, depend, uh, depending on the uh, effective anisotropy field. And so we calculate the uh, attempt time as a function of the perpendicular anisotropy field. So this is the case for the uh, perpendicular anisotropy field of uh, 10 millitesla. So this is equivalent to the perpendicular easy axis uniaxial magnet. So we found that the for the uniaxial case, the uh, tau zero is uh, somewhere around 20 nanosecond, and it uh, gradually decreases and down to less than one nanosecond by increasing the magnitude of the effective anisotropy field. So to summarize the point, the uh, attempt time changes by uh, two orders of magnitude with the effective anisotropy field, and the uh, attempt time in the in-plane images are always uh, shorter than the uh, that with the perpendicular easy access stochastic MTJs. And uh, after that, uh, the first author Shun Kanai uh, derived uh, rigorous theoretical calculations and which is described in this PRB, PRB paper. So if you are interested in our theory, please look at this paper. And today I would like to uh, make the long story very short. And then the, what we found is that the uh, attempt time tau zero is proportional to the uh, saturation magnetization and the volume of the magnet and is inversely proportional to the Gilbert damping and the gradient of the energy landscape. So for the perpendicular MTJ case, if you decrease the uh, perpendicular anisotropy field, you can decrease the energy barrier or the thermal stability factor delta, but your uh, attempt time simultaneously increases because the gradient of the energy uh, becomes uh, uh, gradual. And for the in-plane easy access case, if you decrease the in-plane anisotropy field and increase the effective perpendicular anisotropy field, the magnitude of the effective anisotropy field, you can simultaneously decrease the, effect, the thermal stability factor and the attempt time. So you can obtain the uh, fast uh, random telegraph noise or the short relaxation time. Okay, so based on this theoretical understanding, we prepared uh, stochastic MTJs uh, and we set the thickness of the cobalt ion boron to 2.1 nanometer, with which we could obtain a sizable perpendicular anisotropy field. And we prepare patent into the elliptic MTJ device and the uh, TMR ratio is uh, slightly uh, higher than the 100%. And this shows the DC uh, resistance as a function of the in-plane anisotropy field. So we uh, measured three devices, A, B, and C. So all the devices shows a sigmoid curve-like response, so, um, we, so uh, which is the uh, typical property of the super paramagnetic mag uh, MTJs. Okay, so next, um, we measured our uh, random telegraph noise uh, using this uh, measurement circuit. So we applied a constant voltage and uh, we amplified the signal through the uh, bias T and uh, we obtained the transmitted signal using the oscilloscope. So this this uh, panel shows the obtained time domain uh, signal as a function of the time for different in-plane uh, anisotropy different in-plane field. So at the uh, minus 7.9 millitesla, we obtained the uh, equal uh, probability fluctuations. And then we count the event time and uh, we plot the number of the events as a function of the event time. And the result shows the uh, exponential, exponential relation, which is, uh, means that the, uh, the 
the uh, the uh, fluctuation proceeds with the Poisson process, and we fitted the, this expo this relation with the exponential function and determine uh, quantified the relaxation time. So in this case, the uh, relaxation time for the parallel state is 25 nanoseconds, and the relaxation time for AP state is uh, 16 nanoseconds. And we plotted the uh, relaxation time as a function of the in-plane field for each device, and we could obtain uh, the uh, nanosecond fluctuation down to eight nanosecond. So next, uh, let me compare our results with the previously uh, reported results. So the, uh, there are several reports on the stochastic MTJs, and the blue plot shows the results of the in-plane MTJs, and the red shows the perpendicular MTJs. And what we our what we achieved is plotted around here. So we could achieve the about uh, 100 times shorter relaxation time with these results. And at the last of my talk, so let me uh, briefly discuss, uh, so uh, let me briefly introduce the uh, similar results, uh, similar studies reported at almost at the same timing. So the left figure shows our results and almost the same timing, the IBM team showed uh, nanosecond fluctuation time. And here I'd like to emphasize that in our experiment, we applied a very small uh, current of uh, 90 microamps, which corresponds to the current density of uh, 0.31 megaamp per square, square meter. But in their results, they obtained uh, random telegraph noise, noise only at the volt a uh, relatively large voltage of 0.62 volt, which corresponds to the current of 200 microamps and the current density of 6.9 megaamps per uh, square centimeter. And we also found that uh, our MTJ shows much um, faster fluctuation by increasing the various uh, voltage. And uh, we are not sure. Uh, so we think that the uh, uh, dependence of the relaxation time on the uh, bias current is a very interesting topic in our, our in the uh, interesting uh, future work. Okay, with that, let me summarize my talk. So, at the beginning of my talk, I mentioned that the probabilistic computing is very promising for computationally hard problem without utilizing quantum mechanics, and we showed um, in, uh, the proof of concept of the integer factorization using stochastic MTJs. And uh, in the second half, I described the theoretical and experimental results of the nanosecond stochastic MTJs. And we clarified the mechanism governing the different time scales of the uh, fluctuation time between in and perpendicular MTJs. And the, so the point is that the in-plane MTJs is preferable because the uh, attempt time and the thermal stability factor can be controlled independently. And we could achieve the nanosecond random telegraph noise down to eight nanosecond at negligible current bias. Okay, that's all. Thank you for your attention.